bought the business, there was no systems. The only thing was on the back of the order form. Like, they didn't even have special order forms and all that. We made that. All they had is one order form, this big. And you turn it over and write the total sales. You bought dollar and sign and send it home with the money. And another one would be the order for tomorrow. Eight blueberry, nine blueberry muffins, nine apple muffins, you know. <laughs> and that's all it was. We didn't even have a bank account. This is the money we did. Yeah, I bet I That lots of money. Um, this represents right here, this is like a spring. Um, this is, to buy this small business, we had to borrow money from this represents two years after we, we paid him back. When we paid her back. We, we, oh, that's when we paid her back. back. Sorry. That's, we borrowed some money from relatives, and the people who sold it to us gave us two year payment terms to buy the business. So at this point, we paid them off. So it was now ours, we owned it. And that's when we made our first real donation, which led to the 2%. Um, so we were paying them, I think, five thousand dollars every quarter, every quarter, to pay back what we owed. And then we decided that we would then save that much money for one more quarter, and we would just give that away. And then, once we had done that, then we would start to use some of the money to pay ourselves. So we did not have our own cars. We did not have a lot of things, but we still decided to do that. That's when we were able to, first time we were really able to start to give, uh, give money. Christmas 2001 was the first time we had all the Joma staff together. We rented half the airplane and we flew everybody to Long Kong for Christmas. Wow. And had a big party. <laughs> but each ticket was only like $11 yeah. per ticket. <laughs> so if you can find that ticket, yeah. I think you, know, you can do it too. Definitely we'll take your team to Phuket from Long Kong. So anyways, that was the only time we bought them one-way tickets, and they had to get themselves home. <laughs> <laughs> that was the rule. Because we didn't have enough money. Yeah, so they all took the bus back. Right? Yeah, for three dollars. Everything's gone pretty well for us thus far. Here's where we kind of experienced one of our first real stressful moments. Um, it was the first time we were evicted from a location. And it was our long long location. Uh, the, we did just were not going to read the contract, and we, for whatever reason, had to leave. And it was a very, uh, very tough, uh, tough time for us, quite a struggle. And uh, sort of in the eleventh hour, eleventh um, hour, yeah, we found a new location, and. As soon as we opened that location up, our sales doubled the next day. And, that's it. and it's just a, a real good example of when things seem the darkest. And then, just like that, it's so much better than when we thought it could be. Uh, so then, this is supposed to be a waterfall. This waterfall is um, It was at the same time that we opened up the new bigger shop which is the same one we're in now, that we branded ourselves as Joanna. So we took over this business called Healthy and Fresh, which we weren't really proud of that name. We didn't like it very much. We didn't, but we didn't know what else to call ourselves, and we wanted to name it well. And it took five years before we finally came up with the name Joma. So we started yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2004, the brand name Joma came out, and a lot to help us in our branding and sales increased at a quicker rate of consciousness switch to Joma. Right around the time that we became Joma is the time that we developed our 2% of the people in the environment program. Now between here and here, we were giving on a regular monthly basis. It was only until this point where we decided to come up with an actual program that we could promote to people and get um, not just a way to give, but also to reach out to the community and say, hey, we have this program, we want you to be involved in how we give it, so please tell us if you
you have a need, or if you know somebody who has a need, here's a program we have. So it was our way to connect with the community to say we're giving and let them take part in it. So that's when it started, and it's still going. I'm going to back up. We started developing systems. So we had no systems and just things on paper, one A4 paper, different things. We still use some of the forms now in production. Just changed a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah. And when we got the eviction, and it was dark, we were crying, like almost crying in our hearts. Just a lot. Um, I believe, and I want to say it today, just so you don't hear, that because we have our hearts right and we give first, that it was a miracle the building we got. It wasn't. It. It, we looked at every building two times, but the one we got at the very last minute was a miracle. It was so awesome, and it wasn't. We didn't find it. Someone brought us. And so I believe that when we do choose to do something right, we will receive it back later. And I think that's something that we need to know in our business is we do the right thing first. Don't worry about it. You'll receive something later. Then we went and shortly when we changed the name to Joma, we bought the first two POSs. <laughs> I was Mr. IT. <laughs> <laughs>
our first trip here. We drove my van from to southern Laos to the Cambodia border, but then they wouldn't let us into Cambodia. So we came back to near um, near Da Nang, oh. and we went to Da Nang, Hoi An, and then we drove to Hanoi. And when we got halfway to Hanoi, we remember the hotel still had our passports. <laughs> 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 and so we had to sell mobile phones, so we called the hotel from the neighborhood. And they said, okay, no problem, we'll send them like tomorrow. Tomorrow, plus tomorrow, plus tomorrow, plus tomorrow. <laughs> we got them back like three days later, the night before we were leaving the morning. But anyways, and so we came to visit Hanoi and see what it was like, and we were shocked. I can still remember the feeling I felt sitting in the on the deck of the highlands that's on the second floor of the boat building yeah. uh, on the lake. Okay. Yeah, sitting, standing there looking over, because uh, it's so difficult to laugh, and seeing the, the, the Papa Joe's used to be there, and just seeing that, that view, and thinking to myself, could Joma really be here? Could we really do this? You know, like, it's the first time we ever, I've been here before, but never with the thought of opening my business here. And just sitting there, trying to imagine our business in this very foreign context that I didn't understand at all. I'm feeling kind of scared about it and the potential. And I'm here. And now we have it, you know, and it's just like, wow, what a dream realized, you know, so. When we started documenting, we realized as we're going to grow, we need to document. That one A4 page that the staff fill out, there was no instructions, there was no follow-up, there was no things. Those, those procedures were okay, but we needed to document. So we had a Swedish guy uh, named Petter. He came and helped half-time to start documenting uh, the recipes, get them on paper. So the, the SOPs that we have now. And even we didn't know how to start, but um, the, uh, the, the um, uh, factory manager for Boeing Air, Airplane, came and stayed at my house and he said, okay, I can give you one, I won't get you in trouble. And so our our procedures now look very similar to what Boeing's used for all the main pieces. But it was neat because we didn't know what to do. And he came and he was designing in the Malaysia factory. He was designing all the procedures and implementing all the procedures. So he helped us launch. And so that was another helpful lesson. And then shortly after that, we came up with the first employee handbook, which I think Jonathan did a lot of work on, right? So basically, <laughs> yep, we opened up a small drama light. Um, stayed open in a bank, stayed open a while. We didn't put my clothes, but clothes, not too much. That's only one year of getting out on theirs. And it was a very light, lighter than we will ever do again. Um, <laughs> Didn't make much money, but didn't cost much. But it was a good experience about learning what makes up the Jonah experience and what you can do without and what you can't. And if you take too much away, you don't have Jonah anymore. And so this was a pretty fun little project. But at the same time, just before this, we rented um, one cafe in Bang Bien, another city between Long Bang and Beng Chen. You often see. The tourists you'll see in the, I mean, the, the tubing in Bumia. You see? We rented one of the biggest buildings there and we were going to a big job. So we paid for it and the, the, the deposit. And then we closed it and instead had the opportunity to open the water slides. These are water slides. <laughs> the water slides. So, so these are the water slides in Nam Chan. <laughs> you can pass from. Yes, so the Nam Chan one was our. Our first, after the initial long, our first big new cafe from scratch that we opened up. And so once that was open, we were up to by that time 170 employees. That was 2008. After that was open was when, uh, right around the time that, that Jeff came, that the foreign management team in Lao was growing, and we were all gearing up for us to leave Lao give it to them and prepare for Vietnam. In 2009, we had already moved here. We finally signed our joint venture agreement with Hagar and our other investors, and that's when we formed the board of directors. We met you. You. Actually, she was my... <laughs> <laughs> 